There he is again. He's back on. There he is. I got him. Welcome back to another episode of Bassett with Captain Lou. Guys, this is the Miami Bank Fishing Edition Episode 2. Episode 1, which I shot over a year and a half ago, did so well. I got so many subscribers out of that video. Thank you so much, by the way, which was a clue for me that, that more content is needed in regards to Miami bank fishing. And I do that a lot. That My roots are bank fishing. I grew up bank fishing as a kid, and I didn't graduate into boats until I was later along in life. So I'm going to bring you guys along on these uh, on these ex on these trips, and uh, hopefully I teach you guys a lot about bank fishing here in Miami. So let's go fishing. I'm going to enjoy shooting this video just like I, like I did the last one. Stick around. So we had a cold front blow through the area yesterday morning, which gives us these beautiful bluebird sky type of day. But our bass don't like that, so we have to slow down our approach a little bit when it's this bright. And the number one bait that I use in these type of situations is the good old fashioned stick bait. So stick around and let me show you how I work this. So the key of working a stick bait, and you guys know this about me if you've been following me along for any period of time, is that you have to work, you gotta work this bait very slowly. Notice another thing, I do have, I have zero weight on this. Uh, these particular worms right now, these are Senkos. Uh, a very good friend of mine uh, gifted me some Senkos. So I'm not gonna pass up the opportunity to fish these type of worms. Um, they are a little bit different than your regular stick bait. But nonetheless, as you guys can see, because of the density of this worm, I am fishing it weightless. So it forces me to fish slow because it has to work its way down the water column. The stick bait is one of the easiest of baits to use. It's been around since the, since since the beginning of fishing, I think that was one of our first baits was the worm. And it's because it's so effective, but yet it's so simple. Um, you just cast it and you just let it do its thing. The thing about the worm is you gotta be very patient with it. You want it to be a very subtle approach. You don't wanna overwork the worm. That's one reason why I go weightless because it forces you to be very subtle with your presentation. You could add weight to it. A lot of people add weights to them, depending on wind and depending on depths. But I like to work the water column, so I'm, I'm, I'm learning to uh, use these worms weightless and taking advantage of the water column because these worms w w move so nicely in the water. Look how this worm moves in the water. I mean, the water is clear enough where we could see it, but look at this. Look, how, look, look what it does, look. See that? Look how it just shimmies when it goes down. Watch that. I'm gonna release it right here. Look at that, it just shimmies very slowly down to the bottom. Well, as I mentioned, I know Senkos are, are, are on the pricier side of stick baits. So regardless of the brand you use, I like to see how it handles itself in the water to see how quickly it sinks. And that way it allows me to, to know how, to, how much to count down to know when it's on the bottom. So if this is about three feet right about here, I can go ahead and count down how many seconds it takes to go three feet. So then it allows me to adjust my drop based on knowing those little simple drop rate facts. Now, as far as the equipment being used today, what I'm using is a bait casting rod. This is a Shimano bait casting rod on a Sierra 734. And I'm using 14 pound monofilament line. What I like about this system is the banks. They're manageable banks, as you guys can see. It's not, the gradient is not too high, so it's not stressful or I don't have to, I don't have the risk of falling or slipping because it's almost flat to the water. So these are the kind of things you want to be looking at when you pick a bank fishing spot. Uh, again, remember what I said in the original video, I like to have very low banks because it increases my chances of landing a fish versus the high banks. So as I'm fishing the worm slowly along, I'm just looking at along the bank to see if I see any bait, any bait fish. And quite honestly, all I see right now are these little, little minnows. I don't know if you guys can see them in the shot, but there's little minnows all along. There's little minnows all along the side of the bank here. But another clue is that no one, nothing is feeding on it. I don't see any brim. I definitely not going to see any exotics with this water temperatures we had after the cold front. So it, it, it starts giving me clues on how challenging the fishing may be today. It 
Jesse, that mat of grass I cast over. So if you guys have the casting ability and the equipment to be able to cast that far, my aiming point was the bank. So I landed on top of the grass and then I slowly reeled it off and then let the, let the worm flutter down. If there was any fish that was hungry or interested, it would have hit as soon as that, as that worm cleared the grass, it would have hit it. So take advantage of the grass mats if you see them. So as I'm fishing the worm, I do different things. I know I, I know I, I say fish it slow, but as the course of the outing progresses and the slow approach isn't working, I start doing little different things here and there. Like as you guys can keep seeing here, I'm bouncing it or I'm bringing it off the bottom and then I'm letting it flutter back down. I call it like yo-yoing because I do two and, a, and the worm comes up on the water column and then it wiggles back down again. This spot over here usually has a fish or two around it. Um, I'll, I'll walk up on it and show you guys why. These canal systems are all limestone. So over time or due to construction or land erosion or whatever, pieces of the bank will break off. So then you'll have these big old points or big rocks that fall into the water and it forms a nice piece of structure. So keep an eye on that point right there and as I walk up on it, I'll show you guys. You see? See how this, it's a big rock here? And then it forms these points and these deep caverns over here. So the bass sometimes congregate inside these dark caverns in here. So if you're fishing along the bank, and not just this system, but in many of our canals, you never know what's along the bank. And then the bass just sit in the dark here. See, look at that, see? Down here, if you guys can see that, it's, it's a mat. Look right here where my, Look where my rod's going. See down here? It's a mat. And then there's grass down there. And this mat goes all the way around this cavern. So the nice bass sit in there sometimes. There's a fish. There he is. Oh man, I just had a hit. Oh. He grabbed it, but he didn't grab hook. He had it, look. I don't know if you guys saw that, but right before I cast, right before I cast, there was a disturbance. The water erupted on those minnows. All right, so while I have your guys' attention, this worm is a torn up here, is you flip the worm over and take the bottom tip off. You bite it, and now it resets. Now you have a fresh worm when you flip it over. It doesn't change the accent of the worm one bit. I like, to, I like to go a little lower so I hide the knot. That way I don't get a lot of debris on the knot. And I, I put the body of the hook deep into the worm and then I, make, I give it a little channel like so. So when the fish bites, the hook goes right through that channel. But this makes it completely weedless. See, I like to look where I missed that fish at. And if you guys can see, it was around that cavernous area, see? There's that point in that cavern. That's where I had that hit. All right, so if you guys can see here, see the windblown point? So I'm gonna go ahead and get as close to it as I can. And what I like doing is I like casting on top of it and then swimming it out. And sometimes if the bass are just underneath it, they'll blow up on it. So let's see if, let's see if they're there. So if there's nothing, instead of just keep fishing the area, I'm just gonna try a new fresh area. Again, like I've said, that's the beauty of fishing our Miami systems, is that you could just jump to another canal. And that's what I'm gonna do. So hang tight for a second. So here's another system that's connected to the previous system that I was at. Somebody was at another, I, went to a, I wanted to go to a different system altogether, but somebody was fishing my area, so I was giving him a clear berth. So I came over here. I wanted to come over here because, as you guys can see, it's still a limestone canal, but the sun is setting and it's making it to be very dark. Or let's see if the lighting change changes it. As you can also see in this shot that the canal is very narrow. It's a, it's a little bit more narrow. It's as deep, but it's a little bit more narrow. So let's see if this changes anything. Oh yeah, by the way, if you're ever fishing our canals that's low to the water, be careful with those cavernous holes. 
You do not want to fall in there because you will break a leg because these are very deep cavernous holes. So if you're walking along the bank and you're not paying attention, let's just say pay attention. Well, even the mighty Senko doesn't look like it's getting any hits whatsoever. And that one hit that I did have earlier, I think it was that peacock bass that was chasing the minnows and I think what happened was it bumped it. I don't think it was an actual bass. But I'm telling you, if a weightless stick bait can't catch these fish, you know you're in for a slow outing. Oh, sh two bass. There he is. I got this one. Okay, this was crazy. You guys will never guess how I caught this bass. Look at this one. <laughs> Look at this one. So I didn't get skunked. Go for the release, see if I could catch its buddy. There we go. So just like I thought, they were deep in that ledge and he yawned. He just opened his mouth and he closed it. And I was able to see him and he was right there. This is why I like walking the banks because this area over there was deeper water and now the, the, the bank or the bottom is coming up, the gradient is coming up. So now it becomes shallower here and the deeper water is over there this time. So I wanna to check to see if this area here, if the bass are shallower. There's the fish. Oh, just had one. He had it. Oh man, look, just had him. So that fish was in the deeper portion of the canal, right dead square in the middle. I don't think it got hooked, so I'm gonna try again. It was right over there. Deep too, let me see if he'll hit it again. There he is again, he's back on. There he is, I got him. Oh, he came off, that was a good fish. Uh, I'm still getting used to this mono, look. Twice. All right, let me try this culvert. That was a good sign of that nice fish being deep. Let's see if, let's see if he's in the mouth of this culvert. If he gets it, I'm gonna reel down, I'm gonna let him let him swallow it completely, reel down and stick him. Man, that was a good fish. <laughs> I know I'm talking, I'm crying over spilled milk, but when the fishing is tough and you miss a bass because of something you did, it stings a little bit. All right, I gotta get going, but I am gonna go fishing again tomorrow for a couple of hours. So I'm gonna bring you guys along again. Follow me along here while I go to my car and I'll give you guys a wrap up. Oh, did you guys see how I missed that bass? That bass at the end of this outing gave me two opportunities to stick it. And I missed it on both opportunities and it was a nice fish too. It was, anyways, it was a nice fish, I messed up. But did you guys see how I caught that other bass? I caught that bass because it yawned. That simple, the bass just yawned and I saw it. I let the worm flutter down and then you guys can watch the rest of the video to see how what, I, what happened. It was. It was unbelievable. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the outing. I'm gonna bring you guys along to future outings and I'm just gonna talk to you guys and, and talk to you like if you're one of my buddies and uh, hopefully I teach you guys and, and uh, teach you guys some more tips and tricks about fishing our Miami uh, canal systems. Uh, check out the original video, the one that kicked off this idea right here. It's Miami Bank Fishing, it's the first one. Check it out. I covered a lot of information on there. And if you're new to the channel, you, you owe it to yourself, especially if you're a bank fisherman, to watch it. I know it's long. I know I rambled on like I'm rambling now. But I love just sharing this information with you guys to help you guys become better anglers. I mean, I got a lot of information here from all the experience that I have, and I just want to share it with you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like the video, share the video. Better yet, subscribe, become part of this community. I will check you guys out later. Thanks again for watching. See you soon.